Buenas tardes. My message to Charles was a phone message saying, wow, this place is amazing. It's kind of funny to end up with Los Angeles, I have to say. I feel like I've learned so much from all the experts and the leaders from this community. I've learned so much about uh, how much, how together you have. Uh, certainly uh, the work along the rivers and uh, some of the passion for parks and open space, no need, no need convincing. I'm gonna share with you today um, a 25 year project um, that is associated with stakeholder participation, uh, elected official leadership, and actually um, a, a friend and a mentor who's a Texan, uh, Lewis McAdams, who is from Dallas, who's the one, the poet who inspired the city and citizens like myself to believe that this river could actually come alive again. If I could Zumba, I would do a little Zumba dance right now with all of you and make you wake up, but uh, bear with me and I'm going to try to go quickly through this. Uh, so thank you again for the invitation, uh, the conservancy and uh, the Cultural Landscape Foundation, you're doing amazing work um, and you keep us all sort of on our tiptoes and excited to be part of this uh, pr profession. As I said, I'm pretty passionate about uh, rivers and especially my Ella River um, to the point that I actually have my studio on the east bank of the LA River. Our physical presence at the river's edge not only allows us to literally shine a light on this neglected, hidden uh, resource, uh, but uh, allows us to, to really work and try to make change. A once free-flowing natural arroyo, a, basically a braided stream in the 1800s, the LA River was encased in a straight jacket in the 1930s, much like many of the resources we've looked at today. After a series of devastating floods caused continual damage to development and loss of lives. Um, at, the, uh, at the time that, of course, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, and you could see down here the little model on the left um, of them trying out that the, basically the, the heart, of the, where the river begins at the top uh, of the San Fernando Valley. Um, so they had discovered concrete, and they did a really good job um, at, you know, making this, this river an amazingly uh, a sort of uh, efficient piece of infrastructure that carries water 51 miles. And by the way, it's only 13, maybe 13 uh, inches of rain a year. The rest is uh, what we affectionately call urban nuisance water. And that could mean a lot of things and um, also tertiary treated water from three different, uh, 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 basically, reclamation plants. So um, the river, as you can see, gets confused with the freeways, just so that nobody gets confused. The river is blue and the freeways are red. And uh, there's, uh, there's obviously three times more freeways, which is the way people really understand the city. Um, and it's been mentioned a number of times today that it's really important for these long-term uh, projects that, it, that last through generations. Um, and you see here on the bottom left, uh, Mayor Garcetti and uh, also uh, uh, Mayor Villarigosa. On the other side, on the, on the bottom, you also see one of the leaders of the one of the state conservancies. And then on the top, you see about the 30 of us, including the guy in the hat, which is uh, Louis McAdams. Uh, all people who've been working together uh, sort of with, uh, have relentless, uh, spent relentless efforts and time trying to sort of make this uh, river story happen. You could see here the city, the state, the county, the, the, all the different nonprofits. So when I talk about what I'm doing, I'm typically interfacing with many of these folks at all times. Today, I'm missing uh, the purchase of uh, 40 acres of parcel G2, uh, which is one of the first uh, larger parcels that is finally being purchased. And there's a big event on the river, $60 million. And somebody mentioned today uh, fluvial geomorphologists. So, you know, when you have a creek like your creek, and I don't want to make too many excuses, but the Army Corps of Engineers is not going to give us a pass 
like they give you, gave you guys a pass on the ecosystem restoration study. Okay, if we pay, can we manage it? Because when you're dealing with 51 million people at 51, 51 miles and impacting probably 20 million people, they're not going to let you take out concrete without like 10 years of processing going through this, this you know, any kind of effort. So that 40 acres, the, the 40 acres we're talking about today will probably cost $250 million just to take out the concrete and make that project happen. So um, how to revitalize the river has not been an easy answer given its infrastructural and ecological complexity. There are 2,200 storm drains that empty into the river and uh, many migrating shorebirds use the thin patches of algae in the river as essential habitat patches on their journey south. So they've learned to adjust. We call this urban ecology. Uh, point blank, the LA River is the definition of an urban river, something that so clearly has uh, the mark of both humans and mother nature on it. Our job has been to define the identity and its place in this blurred world between the built and the natural. And you see there, uh, the Elysian Park on the right, looking south um, at the, down, the, the skyline of downtown. The poet, um, Louis McCadden, uh, the, the founder of the Friends of the LA River, called this a 40-year artwork. That was back in 1985. And like someone mentioned today, the regime has always been to try to trim all the water, to, to cut all the vegetation on the river. So he chained himself to some willows and said, no, let me see if it really floods. So um, they humored him after two years of complaining and chaining and all the things he did. And they decided to let the river, the, to see what happened. And of course, three, uh, 20 years later, we haven't had a flood. And we now have this very healthy um, sort of riverine environment in areas where the concrete didn't stick because as great as the engineers were, that water table won over. And in about a seven mile stretch, we don't have uh, concrete on the bottom of the river. So the river suffers from the problems of perception and policy. It's largely hidden from view, out of sight and out of mind. It's the back door. The approach to revitalizing the river has been to continue to be to, uh, to bring attention to the river through vi various planning efforts, projects, and immediate activation strategies, some of which I will now highlight. I hope to share with you all, all some essential lessons I've learned through um, this process. So the importance of comprehensive planning, I think that's become pretty clear, and you obviously are converted because you uh, 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 the City Council adopted the master plan. Um, it's important, and uh, of course, these, uh, the political leadership is necessary for these planning efforts, and the truth is that a lot of these planning efforts actually lead for funding for implementation. Um, so the LA River Master Plan um, it was a, an effort of a large team, including a Tetra Tech, who had major work, has had major impact on uh, your river here in San Antonio, uh, Civitas, Wenk Associates, ourselves, and then the Department of Water and Power and the Bureau of Engineering. Uh, and actually, as a team with three landscape architecture firms, we had a great experience. The, uh, the master plan was approved in 2007 unanimous, unanimously by the 15 council members. And um, also integral into the process was the Army Corps of Engineers. Um, so they were accepting and adopting all the testing we were doing in terms of fluvial geomorphology to make sure that the channel could be changed over time. So um, as you can see, that's, that's the master plan. And uh, some of the, the sort of the systems thinking we use to sort of uh, adopt and uh, to integrate into the planning effort. It was a two-year effort that was completed on time and on budget under Gary Lee Moore, the uh, uh, a city engineer. Um, and we considered, you know, of course, the, all the systems as we went forward to, to do sort of a, an urban planning study that actually tried to also address uh, not only hydrology, hydrology as a sort of a, in terms of the larger sort of LA basin, but also transportation and alternative modes of transportation and all the sort of community needs. So the master plan goals were re uh, refined in the initial phases of the planning effort, revitalizing the river, greening the neighborhoods, creating value and capturing community opportunities. 
um, when when we looked at sort of the we looked at the river, we looked at the parks, and then we looked at the urban network, and we created basically d this dis district district based approach, um, so that we could actually keep the river planning <laughs> to to eight council districts and not 15, but because it was very complicated with also the county supervisors. So among the things that we contributed to the city was a, what we called the Rio River Overlay District, which was approved again by the planning department and now becomes sort of a framework for the adoption of projects, um, as well as indicated that there needed to be a river office, which there is, and then the planning department also has a special river unit. Uh, the, end, the, the final uh, part of the project was the definition of 240 implementable projects along the 32 miles. And we could talk about what 32 and not 51, but you know, it's a, it's a bigger political story than I uh, think we have time for today. So that, this meant, for example, that a, a one councilman could decide that they wanted to, that they ha if they had a, an allocation of about $10 million, um, that's, this is what they could do in their district in the next two years. So it happens to be that you see there in CD13 um, the purchase of uh, the parcel that was purchased today. So this is again, again, fluvial geomorphologists approved um, this sort of section, allowing us then to actually change the channel, bring people to the river, face the river, and actually bring ecological uh, sort of health to the city. How to sort of navigate around infrastructure, and you have some great examples here, but our, this is between Glendale and Los Angeles, one of about 55 miles of trails and paths. So one side of the river is basically walking paths and the other side of the river is for uh, cyclists. And uh, many of these projects are underway, including one stretch right now, which is 12 miles. Um, and then, of course, how to actually make the water present in Los Angeles, how to help people understand and, get, and continue to be captivated by the, the notion that there is water, that there are parks, and that the river actually brings its bank bounty back. And although we are basically in a Mediterranean biome, the fact is that we have a lot of aquifers and that we are learning how to use and reuse water three times and so when we're talking about water reclamation, we're talking about all our parks and even getting it to the, the point of being drinking water. And of course, the notion of green streets before it was really in green infrastructure, be, before that subject, that term became much more no, well known in the press. Uh, this is 10 years ago, and many of these projects are also underway. This is um, a the case of a 125 acre site in the middle of the city. It's a rail, uh, rail facility and we worked with Friends of the LA River. It started out as a proactive planning project, advocacy by design, um, with architects and engineers and eventually became um, a conservancy funded project, the Santa Monica Mountains Conservancy, who saw an interest in this project. So it makes no sense for Union Pacific to have this active rail yard and although they complained tremendously about this project being uh, basically adopted by these nonprofits for a study, they actually, um, the Army Corps of Engineers decided to include it in their ecosystem restoration study. And there was a little bit of a scuffle between uh, lawyers uh, of Union Pacific and the mayor's office, but it is up for purchase um, and, ha and right of uh, first refusal. What also happened with this sort of an, as an advocacy project was that uh, when uh, the Olympics were being considered in Los Angeles, this became the favorite site. This is for 2024. We don't know where it's going to lie. It's between Paris and Los Angeles. So maybe we, we can do a Zumba after this to, to, to hope and pray that it will happen. Um, that this, this could then become uh, one of those uh, sort of the Olympic village. So again, you know, really thinking about stormwater management, water quality, connectivity, and habitat and recreation. These diagrams show those various competing by complementary values. And um, again, really thinking and, and uh, 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 allowing people and educating someone like uh, Lewis McAdams, who I actually 
uh, he, he thinks he's a landscape architect, actually, uh, because he now understands uh, the process we go through and the value we bring to the table by virtue of solving problems and presenting them in a way that are, that are very understandable and comprehensible. And the Arbor study, which, it, which is basically the study that um, San Antonio did, which is a, a study for the uh, seven miles of the river associated with what they call an ecosystem. That's it, once they complete an ecosystem uh, study, the Army Corps, then, they're el then they make these projects eligible, eligible for certain funding. The thing was that they were in a major uh, funding crisis in DC at the time. This is about seven or eight years ago. So actually, uh, Mi Jeans, uh, a Korean blue jean manufacturer, had given uh, Lewis McAdams a million dollars to do whatever he wanted, and he ended up paying for the finishing of the ecosystem restoration study. So there. So all these, you know, how do, do, we, how do we deal with uh, private-public partnerships or donations? They come in many different kinds of packages. Um, and so the importance of comprehensive planning, it, it's clear um, that we want to avoid planning fatigue but, and we want to keep people engaged. And one of the things we discovered, and here you see a group of young people on the right, which are part of the, uh, the river unit, and they actually are part of a high school, uh, 11th and 12th grade of about five high schools along the LA River. Um, and uh, then Grown in LA is a public-private partnership that has been uh, employed throughout the process. Oh, it, it says, it's basically a, uh, the Grown in LA is a, a project that we started, with a nonprofit to actually grow plants for the 10,000 acres of projects that we expect in the next 10 years. Um, we have started the project, we've identified partners, and that's all through our office and uh, led by an ecologist on our team. Um, and uh, we're actively working on the project. And here I am in the first project together with Kat Superfiski, who's, uh, uh, so we're developing these projects. We're testing out um, actually uh, purple pipe water and the salt content of uh, the reclama reclamation water to see how well uh, many of our uh, plant material will do in these restoration projects. Um, a friend of mine in his 80s during his uh, 80, uh, birthday party asked me what he could do for the river, so I introduced him to the people of the, uh, of the city of Los Angeles, uh, who then nurtured a gift of uh, $7 million for this bridge, which is an equestrian and bicycle bridge that's about to start construction. And again, um, as you could see here, one of the things that we did during that period was actually um, declare, the, the river was declared navigable as part of the ecosystem restoration study because it was very hard for the DC folks, uh, Washington DC sort of administrators at the Army Corps of Engineers to understand what we were talking about. So they came out, they started understanding the, uh, sort of what the, the, what the river really looked like and the potential. And here you see some of those initial efforts, and we now have a very active and fruitful kayak program that actually is well-managed and is actually making good money. We also have what we call a river rover. So if you can't find the river, the river comes to you, and it goes to parks, and it goes uh, to schools. And it, this is in front of City Hall. It's been incredibly successful. Again, another donation to, to, to our Texan, McAdams, by the Me, Me Jeans Company, um, an incredibly well decked out, an amazing program in terms of teaching people about water and also, of course, about watershed and water management and nature in the city. And if that wasn't complicated enough, we actually won a competition uh, next, to city call, next to City Hall, again, bringing water and watershed management to, uh, to, the, to City Hall, to a project that actually wanted to sort of elevate sort of the, the notion of the environment, food, and culture as part of a three-acre park in the middle of the city. Now, when you think that that project costs $12 million, as opposed to any single project along the LA River, which is probably in $100 million packages, it all makes sense. Um, and this is a section of how that worked. And then the importance of inclusivity. We also worked with HUD on a project for five neighborhoods along the river that were feeling incredibly marginalized. 
And of course, if you haven't heard the word gentrification many times, uh, uh, we, you will hear it um, in the future. And we have uh, been plagued with the notion of gentrification along the river communities. We did this wonderful project and uh, brought the community together, had many different types of community activities with them, and ended up with two projects per community, so 10 projects total, um, that are now sort of in, in, the, in construction. And of course, again, this, the importance of inclusivity. As a firm, we've become, come to realize the importance and need for the, every, all these voices. And this is kind of a funny story. Uh, I'm in the top right, um, and I think I'm celebrating the fact that we're opening up a meadow and that we're being yelled at because uh, we're, we're, gonna, we're coyote killers when we open up the park. Um, this is a project we did on the right in, in, in terms of the type of uh, interactive programming that we did. One on the bottom on the right at the, at the Orange County Great Park, which I worked on with Ken Smith, where a balloon with 35 people going up in the air is still going on and it's been going on for the last five years. And it was basically to bring something within two years of the project getting started that elevated people it figuratively, but also help them understand the process of planning and design. And on the top right, you see a map, which is 30 feet by 30 feet of the park. So people could walk around and actually find the things that during the community workshops they had told us they wanted. So incremental, accomplice, incremental accomplishments. Here you have the mayor when he was a councilman and the then uh, head of the EPA when uh, EPA was uh, very robust. And uh, this is uh, what, um, this is uh, basically uh, what it, our team going down, um, down the LA River, um, and it is really rough and fun. Um, it was a, it's a successful, it was a successful pilot program that now is on its third year. We have businesses such as, such as pop-up cafes that are establishing along the river where industrial buildings have stood vacant for decades. Uh, and projects like the Illinois River Greenway, we're on to our 15th mile, I believe, right now. So that's pretty exciting. And the next set of projects, we're actually going to go through tunnels and over freeways. So that's pretty exciting. So you don't have to take your bike in and out of the trail, but actually get through those 11 miles. And artists doing amazing things. This group of artists created what they called Project A, a, a Collective with 51 things you could do along the river, the importance of these, you, you have beautiful gates. We have uh, also now a giant uh, a water wheel that's about to get built. Many, many people are fishing in the river, whether it's very healthy or not, I don't know, except they really enjoy it and they talk about it when we show up on our kayaks. Um, and uh, we also have, like you have, many camping uh, experiences along the river, and uh, also art projects. So this art project is uh, really fascinating, and uh, we show movies, and there's a lot of activity. To an outsider, parts of the LA River may still look unchanged uh, when they appeared back in 1978 when Danny and Kenneke dragged, uh, raced down the concrete, but to, to us, there's been tremendous change. And um, so we see it, people feel it, it's palpable, they enjoy it, the schools come, there's a lot of uh, science programs and activities. And um, I will say that, uh, and again, since all of us were charged with uh, sort of understanding sort of what is it that we initially thought, and what I did was I brought a large aerial photo and I started marking, about, uh, marking it up and I said, okay, what are the four things I think this Brackenridge really needs. We need to mark the park. It needs to be perceivable, understandable, and accessible. And you could see here the orange lines where those, those types of things would happen. We need to weave the place. We need to make sure, so you're marking the park, we're weaving the place, and you're marking it with signs, you're marking it with art, you're marking it with portals and windows, and uh, you're weaving the place and you're making, it, it's hard to, when you go on a walk, it's hard to figure out where you're going and when you're going and what you're doing. And 
there are so many opportunities like somebody mentioned today and how and what you see down here on the right where we have a five k run along the river ourselves now three times a year and basically to raise money for the project but also just to come together and really have an experience along the river and we need to reveal the water and everybody has talked beautifully and eloquently about all these opportunities in this this river the stream these underwater underground um, opportunities to sort of the reveal the wit river again and uh, to celebrate the history and culture you see on the bottom set of images um, basic, the, the River Center in 1950s building, um, it was a restaurant and a spice factory, which is now a great place for uh, nonprofits, conference facilities, and weddings and parties. And on the right is uh, Barnstall Park, uh, which also has been brought back to life um, by, by, uh, in, 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 a, in many ways as a, as a community uh, destination. So, if I leave you with something is that we really, as, as a company, and, and that's what our book is going to be, which is advocacy by design. Advocacy is not just in the form of advocacy, but it's part of the design process. It's important, um, and we do it um, as part of our sixth sense, and we don't feel that we could design without having stakeholders and community and leadership participate in a meaning, meaningful way. And finally, the image that everybody saw, I thought I was the only one who was taken on the tour to see this, the beautiful blue hole. Not fair, not fair. But anyway, um, I'm so thrilled to have been, had the opportunity to travel to San Antonio and to participate in such an importantly, important and timely conversation with such an, a wonderful group of panelists and, and the people in this room, the San Antonians from Angel, Angelina to San Antonians. It's uh, pretty great. And uh, honestly, been an inspiration to me and uh, I'll bring this inspiration back to Los Angeles. And my hope is then in sharing my first work, my, our firm's work, and we have a couple members of the firm here today, envision for similar, similar kinds of efforts back and around the country. So thank you very much.